Okay, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to wrap this table right here. My daughter Sophie, they found this table and it's free, but we're going to wrap it in the black Dynock right there and we're going to change the look of it. But first of all, we got to prep this little boy out. We, there's a little bit of high boys right here and this guy right here and burn mark right here. So we're going to make it look as pretty as possible uh, just by wrapping it. Also, we're going to use um, one or 80 grit sandpaper first and then we're going to go on 220 grit sandpaper and then um, we're going to take this table out first and sand it right over there. And I'm showing this this because I'm this is an average old table that we're going to make it look brand new and rewrap it and everything. So it has like a little curve to it right here so I'm going to get the vinyl, heat the heat gun and stretch it over and put it underneath the vinyl or vinyl underneath this part right here. And I'm going to get steps of doing that too. But I want to show you the transformation of the most perfect, ugliest table that I found. <laughs> and make it look pretty. <laughs> Alright, let's get the process going. Okay, I first tested out the 80 set grit sandpaper. And it was a little too gritty. So I normally use 220 sandpaper. And I'm, what I'm doing is I'm getting all the little high boys off and um, just getting the clear coat, a little bit of the clear coat off and, and just get it nice and smooth for the wrap to, to go over. So any, if you feel by, by your fingers, if there's any divots or, or uh, bumps right there, is actually I felt the little bumps right there and there. So I, after videoing, I did a little sanding, a little more sanding right there because I missed that spot. But after that's all done, you take a rag, I actually have two rags. The first rag is to get the dust and the big chunks off. The second rag right here, as we see, is um, a terry cloth, uh, my fiber uh, towel, and an invisible glass cleaner, and I cleaned it real good. And then that last thing I like to do is use Primer 94, and I usually get it around the edges, like underneath part right here, and also uh, where the all where the edges are at. So the vinyl actually sticks a much, much better right there around the edges. So a lot le less chance of uh, lifting up. And then every once in a while, uh, if uh, raw wood is not sticking good enough, I actually use the primer knife for on the raw wood. So, so you've seen right here, right here, I'm just kind of doing a little walk through. I'm scanning, I usually scan the subject before I do anything, making sure I don't see anything that's popping up or needs to be fixed before I actually start wrapping it right here. Uh, the next thing I like to do is I grab my uh, bodyguard knife and my architectural film squeegee that you can go at the armwraps.com website to order from. And what I did is I measured the table. The table was actually 48 inches wide, so I had to cut it at 54 inches wide because it's not a big deal because the vinyl is actually a solid color so it doesn't matter what the direction of the wood grain or pattern it is so what i uh did was yeah cut it at 54 inches right there and i used my bodyguard knife so it just it just basically cuts the vinyl uh, but doesn't cut underneath like the table so that's the reason and you can buy i'll put links down below where you can buy these tools and everything. So this is where I can kind of eyeball it, what is called dry installing it, and kind of figure out um, is it good enough to go through. So right now, the vinyl comes for 48 inches wide, so I'm gonna cut in half. So that gives me a plenty of vinyl to do the top two uh, parts of the table. So I like to pre-cut all the subjects uh, before I start wrapping, because I get in a rhythm uh, to do that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the, I guess the lip that pops up. I'm going to measure that now. And I like to go a little bit over of that right there. And same thing, I'm going to cut it at 54. So let me. And then I'm going to cut it, I think it was like 30 inches, if I remember correctly. Um, sideways so zoop it doesn't have to be exactly 54 i just i like to have a little bit extra right there so now um i measured the the width of that thing that popped up actually i'm gonna turn it sideways right there 
And yeah, I think it was 30 inches. So I always leave the scraps and leftovers on another place, a little area. It is a tight area, but I was going to move it somewhere else. Okay, so let's start uh, doing the top part. And so anytime when you're doing a kind of wrap, I see the back of the 3M, uh, the backing. I always have it in one direction. So prime example, when I was out on a job, I was doing the exact same black and I was doing wall wraps. And so when I was doing the wall wraps that um, I accidentally had the 3M reversed and uh, when I installed it, you can actually tell the, the direction of the the pattern, especially on this one right there. And I said, that looks funny. And so uh, I realized, oh, I did that. So there was my mistake. So I'm telling you what my mistakes are. So keep it in mind. You always have the the 3M logo basically go up words or at the same direction of all the projects you're working on just to make it consistent. Now what I did is I just pulled the backing down just enough to just tack it on, seeing right here. And I grab my squeegee and start going to town. So the squeegee you see right there was I designed that uh, to make it go with the architectural films. And there's lots of videos showing how to use a squeegee. There's a lot of tools in that one squeegee right there. And the reason why I like using a squeegee, but that's another video right there. Um, so once I get that, I like to make a spot um, to put all the, the scraps. I try, try to keep clean, have a clean area and that's a prime uh, it helps everything out. Now, I tried using that thing. It didn't work. <laughs> so you, you just cut the excess off so you're not fighting it. And uh, make sure all your scraps are in one little spot. And if you're, if you're looking like, uh, if you want to do something like this, you can always go to the armwrapsstore.com website. You can see a lot more, hundreds of different patterns, colors, designs, all kinds of stuff right there. And I'm showing you this so you can actually do it yourself. But if you want to hire arm wraps, uh, if you're in the Boise, Idaho area to do some uh, like table wraps or uh, cabinetry wraps or anything like that, get a hold of us. 208-696-1180 info at rmwraps.com. But other than that, right now, I'm actually using my thumb and the squeegee uh, to get into the cor corners and that's the reason why I like using a hard squeegee like that because it, it, you force the vinyl down and out or in if you want to call it right there and I'm pressing pretty hard with my thumbs going in and that squeegee right there is actually a worker A or actually a worker B squeegee I do have a worker A it's a little similar but there's a little more tools to it but other than that um, now I'm just going to be cutting off the, the excess off and that part right there, to take my knife, running against the bottom of that, removing that, and just curling it up onto each other so it's vinyl on top of vinyl, so it's not in the way. Now, on the corners, I like to go right there, and right where it starts curving a little bit, that's where I cut. And then I cut the excess off right there. So I kind of kind of look at it and I kind of feel it, make sure there's no lip on there. And then there, now, I should check the video, but I got a little too, this one right here, I believe, I got a little too, um, not in the video all the way. So I'm just cutting the excess off slowly. Don't kind of do, yeah, there you go. And using my thumb and I'm, 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 I'm feeling to go all the way around. And there is where you get the extra vinyl. And you make sure your knife is nice and sharp. And, and then you kind of cut the excess off. You can actually use a little bit of sandpaper, especially around those edges. I should have done that to show you on the video. But if you use 220 uh, sandpaper and you fold it up in like a little 
little, not a little ball, but a little uh, one inch strip and just do a little sanding. You can get rid of those little um, edges, if you want to call it. And also the heat gun actually helps out too. So definitely do that. And you just kind of take your time getting the excess off. And then at the very end, um, after you install all, I mean, get it all installed right there, I like to use the heat gun to uh, post heat. So what post heating does is actually just kind of brings the vinyl a little bit further into the subject, but also activates the glue and it just sucks it in to the surface. So that's why I like doing the post heating and uh, it's, a, it's a good bonding. So right here on the edge is uh, when I'm using the heat, it softens up the vinyl. So it, it goes around the curves a little bit better. So I'm just gonna soften it up, let it cool off a little bit, and then I'm gonna um, poke it in there or go around the edge. So again, it's like it's activating the glue a little bit more and softening up the vinyl. So you don't see any of the edge lips if the vinyl is popped up. Okay, let's get the last of the vinyl on there. So I'm just checking, make sure the size is right on the table. Also the 3M is going the same direction of all the other 3M logos. And now I'm gonna be pulling the backing down. It's gonna be about a foot. And I'm gonna pinch or crease the backing paper. And go right about there, crease it, flip it. And I wanna make sure I have at least an inch going onto the black part, inch or two. I'm tacking it on and double checking it, make sure it's the same width, if you want to call it. Now I'm using my architectural sque squeegee and I'm doing it this way. Uh, I made it uh, that, direct, that design so you can kind of train yourself to, when you're squeegeeing it, you need to have a 30 degree angle squeegee so you're forcing the vinyl down and out, the air bubbles out. And that's the reason why I kind of made it that way. And I like to do a clean, have a clean room, organized room, so I make sure all the backing or scraps or everything is, is actually in the garbage can. So you're not tripping over it or just getting, it's getting in the way. And that's what I'm trying to avoid. Um, you get in, and that's a kind of a small room, so you need to stay as organized as possible. Even with a large room, uh, I like to have the garbage bay close by and throw it in the garbage once instead of throwing on the floor and then putting in the garbage. And that takes two steps instead of one step. Again, a clean room or clean area is a good area to be in. So now what I'm doing right now, uh, the less heat, the better. So I'm right now is I'm actually using the heat just to soften up the vinyl a little bit. I'm not stretching it or anything, and I'm barely putting the heat on there. Just enough for it to start what I call it, dancing. And just I'm just taking my thumb, I'm not stretching, and I'm just kind of putting the, the vinyl down with my thumb, making I'm feeling the vinyl around these edges, making sure there's no bubbles or uh, creases or anything like that. That's what I'm doing right now. And I'm just kind of slowly going in uh, around the edge of that unit, as you can see. And again, I'm, I'm barely, I'm barely putting enough pressure downwards on there. I'm just getting, make sure the air bubble, there's no air bubbles right there. Usually around corners like that, it does have little creases and you're not fighting it, but you're just, you're, it's going down not as easy as the straight parts. So I slowly do that and I keep on doing it. Kind of enjoy what I'm doing. I'm zoned in to that moment. Just kind of pay attention to add enough heat on there just to get rid of those little fingers. If you add too much heat, you actually will, um, you add a, you kind of destroy the texture, but also uh, when you're stretching it, you, you destroy the texture, but also it creates like a little sheen. In this 
when I'm going underneath the thing, you will see when I'm actually pushing more, uh, you know, I have a little more pressure and a little more heat, you'll start seeing the sheen. But of course, I'm going to be cutting most of that off. So, and, and also it's underneath the table, so you won't see that sheen part. So just kind of be careful when you're stretching, because you, especially a, a solid color like this. Solid colors, they look great, but they're also challenging because there's more chances of uh, showing that, that sheen-like or the stretch parts. And at the end of the job, what I do is I post heat everything, the surface, the, the around the edges and everything. So what that does is activates the glue and softens the vinyl and it sucks in this, uh, the surface. And, and, um, and when you're post heating, you can see the vinyl dancing and the bubbles popping up. And you, a lot of times I just take my thumb and just kind of uh, gently put it on there and, or my squeegee and kind of go that way. So right now what I'm doing is I'm right where the edge is right there. I want to do is I want to on the right side of the vinyl uh, where the hinges are at. I want to release that vinyl right there. And I, I can't do it if I have, um, when I tuck the vinyl underneath that the table, I can't do it. So I got to release that right now so I can bring the vinyl, or actually the table, that one side of the table down so I can get the vinyl tucked in and that I think it was one eighth inch um, lip on the table okay that's where I bring it down and that's where you see the, the edge right there and I'm just kind of trimming that off. That's why I should look at the camera because I <laughs> I'm focused right now, so I I don't look at the my my phone to see where the video part is at. And I, what I should have done is I should have looked at the phone a little bit more every once in a while. I should train myself to do that. Now I'm gonna take my squeegee. Well, I take my thumb right now. I should, yeah, take my squeegee. And that's another reason why I like to have my hard squeegee. I'm actually pushing hard down on my squeegee. And, and so it's like pushed in there. And at the end of this right there, I'm going to use a little heat and actually sink it in even more with the heat gun. Okay, I grab my heat gun. My heat gun, that's hilarious. So every area I do, as I, I wrap it and then I post heat it and I just treat it like that section is done and I do that with a lot of my jobs and I didn't oh there's a layer bubble right there there you go okay now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come underneath and you can see a hard I'm not hard not it's a hard stretch but I'm stretching it to the point that it's actually um making that sheen I'm gonna show you if it shows it pretty soon I try to get about a half inch um, going underneath that I can actually cut. So I'm trying to make it as perfectly as possible. There you go. And I, around the, the sharp edges like that, yeah, so you got to do a little bit at a time. Okay. Hopefully I can show you where that sheen, why I'm pulling really hard is that where that sheen is at. That's where I kind of noticed it when I was doing it. And that, again, around that radius right there, that's where you have to pull real hard. Now I have to make sure, I want to make sure there's like it's a half inch bleed. Okay, so you can, there he goes. And I'm just tacking it on on that side because most of that is going to be gone. And just take your time. There he goes. And the good thing about using this kind of vinyl, actually, uh, and I told my my daughter, and I said, hey, if this starts getting damaged or you want to change the look of this one, oh, there's a sheen right there on my thumb. Um, pull it off, and then we can just reinstall another 
pattern or another design or, or color or anything like that. So that's the beauty of this right here. You can update it once a year if you want or once a week or whatever. It'd be kind of expensive, but um, that's the beauty of the architectural films, actually custom prints too. You can actually change it. Now I'm going to see the difference change right there. I'm going to use my thumb as like a, like a spacer guide. I know it takes practice, but I, I have about a half inch bleed and I, I kind of, why well, I say locked my thumb, but I kind of locked my thumb on a certain size. And you can see how that looks right there. And again, it takes a little practice. And there it goes. So it's a nice clean cut. I don't have any tools. Uh, I, every once in a while I try using tools, but I keep on messing up. So I'm used to it. Well, it's a kind of old fashioned way. But I'm used to using my thumbs and my hands and everything. Um, you, there, there are tools like that. They're spacers. They, it's perfectly spaced. But again, the thumb for my thumb is it does a really pretty, pretty good job, as you can see. So we see right here is actually a table wrap. You can actually wrap your table just by wrapping it. This is a 3M die knock material. You can go order this from rmwrapsstore.com. Uh, the pattern number is PS504, and it's a black. And uh, so we just want to update the look of this table right here. So we just basically, I took a sand, sander, sanded it down, uh, didn't clear coat or anything like that. I just sanded it down and put some primer 94 around the edges, around here, right here. And then we just updated it. So the smallest roll you can order from the rmwrapsstore.com website is uh, 10 feet. So we had to order 10 feet of that just to wrap this right here. We have a lot more extra to do. So we can actually wrap this guy right here later on or underneath uh, parts of this right here. You can wrap in here. Uh, this is a little more challenging. So you might have to paint this right here. But again, this definitely updates the looks of, of your table. So I'm showing you the opportunity of wrapping your table, especially around these corners right here. Wrap around here, then underneath, right there. That's the reason why I make this how-to video, so you can actually update your own table uh, just very quickly. I think it took me a couple hours to do, uh, and I took my time. And uh, yep, showing the possibilities of wrapping subjects around your house. So. We have lots of other videos on the rmwraps.com website in the middle of the uh, website. Uh, you can see how to wrap architectural films. And I'm going to put this on here, but there's a lot more things that uh, you can learn by wrapping or watching those videos. And other than that, if you ever want to get a hold of me, 208 696 1180, info at rmwraps.com. But uh, yeah, we have tons of different designs, and this will last a lot longer on this instead of the wood. And uh, you can actually change the look of your tables in different different colors, different wood grains, different colors. You can make this red if you want or whatever you want. This is it. So stay tuned. We've got more products and products coming your way, and uh, come back.